Transportation is part of everyone's daily life. Without the system of roads, bridges, airports, buses, and trains, the way we live our lives would be virtually impossible. Hi, I'm Nick Lowndes. I'm the director of the Center for Transportation and Livable Systems and an assistant professor at the University of Connecticut. Our economy relies on the transportation system to provide mobility and fast transportation uh, to make things like a next day delivery possible. Uh, our, our cities rely on the ability to move people and goods efficiently and comfortably uh, throughout our cities. And our communities uh, rely on transportation systems to help build and grow uh, places that we like to live and to socialize. Over the past half century, uh, we've become more and more obsessed with fast, efficient transportation of often neglected communities that are affected by our transportation systems. Our group here at UConn and the Center for Transportation and Livable Systems has focused uh, their research and outreach activities on helping people build and plan for sustainable communities through transportation systems. There's a number of major trends that are impacting the transportation system and the communities that grow up around it. First, we're seeing a demographic shift as baby boomers retire, and this changes the types of demands that are placed on our system. The second is new forms of energy. New forms of energy are changing the way we fuel our vehicles and also the environmental impact that transportation has. Currently, uh, transportation accounts for about 31% of CO2 emissions in the U.S. And lastly, GPS and smartphone technology has changed the way people navigate. While separate, these three trends are pushing our transportation systems towards one that serves a population that increasingly looks to their mobile devices and smartphones for information and a population that's less interested in owning a vehicle than they were a, a generation ago. My name is Norman Garrick. I'm a professor of civil engineering. My work here focuses on transportation and urban planning. Toy Center is an amazing new change in how we build places, but it's really going back to the old way of design that we have abandoned in America over the last several decades. The story of how that change came about goes back to the 1920s when we had the idea that we were in a new period of development and so the cities that we were building would just not do anymore. And what we have seen since then are these shopping malls and commercial centers that are designed for cars. So in my work, one of the things that I've been trying to do is to understand how places like Hartford and cities like that, that were built before the car era, how they modified themselves and adjusted to trying to accommodate cars and what cost did they pay in trying to do that. But it's also to understand how these cities can restore some of the life and vitality that they had in the pre-car era. As researchers with CTLS, my colleagues and I are working to build mathematical models and technical analysis tools. In public transit, these tools will increasingly use uh, data from a resource called T-Hub. T-Hub is a one-stop shop for, uh, for engineers and planners to use in making their transportation network design decisions. Uh, researchers here at the University of Connecticut are leveraging this data to not only look at uh, network design, but look at the people that the uh, transportation system serves. One of our most important projects with T-Hub is helping the State Department of Transportation understand where uh, low-income and minority populations are, and how the public transit system can be designed to best serve them. The way our transportation systems and communities are designed affects safety in a profound way too. Deceptively simple things, like having on-street parking, can slow vehicles down to the point where people feel much safer and in fact are much safer. At speeds greater than 25 miles per hour, the chance of a pedestrian dying in a collision increases dramatically. For example, at 20 miles per hour, 5% of pedestrian crashes result in fatalities. At 40 miles per hour, 90% of pedestrian crashes are fatal. There are ways to design roads so that drivers slow down without even thinking about it, which results in a safer environment. So for example, in addition to on-street parking, sidewalks on the side of the street and buildings that are closer to the road tend to reduce the vehicle speeds. Uh, generally, I found that drivers 
slow down when they feel more hemmed in on the road. The models and tools that we're building rely on large amounts of data and serve a variety of users. All of these are promoting the goals of both CTLS and the Yukon Transportation Group. That's to support sustainable transportation systems, livable communities, and a high quality of life in the places where we live.